Welcome back, everyone, to Whistler Olympic Park for the 2023 FIS Nordic Junior and U23 World Ski Championships. I'm Steve Scholes. I'm here with Tim Wintanyu. We just saw an incredibly exciting junior women's interval start race. Tim, what did we learn from that race going into the junior men's race this afternoon? Well, we saw out there some starters starting out real hard, real fast, and they weren't able to hold pace. So pacing is going to play an important role in the men's race. You want to start out strong, but you got to be able to maintain that pace and push harder all the way through to the end. Yeah, so we got their junior men's race coming up, but here's some highlights of our junior women's individual start race. Okay, so that was Marina Kalen getting underway here for the 10K individual start race. And Steve, I think she paced it so well. You know, she was sort of top five early on, but she kept just moving her way up the ranks, getting splits from the coaches. You know, talking to her after the race, she said that's probably one of her best results. She felt better in the classic race, but she did capitalize on her strength today and uh, ended up with a bronze medal. And then we have Ruzvin Jensen, 13th, I believe, in the classic race, but today, a solid day as she comes into the finish, taking a silver medal, improving on her bronze from last year's World Championships, and then MGA, our 60th starter, Mila Grossberg, Haugen, Andreasen, taking off on her race. Yeah, definitely one of our favorites today, and she just showed just how strong and dominant she is out there as a junior. Yeah, looking strong throughout, never showing any weakness, but on that final descent, she did lose a few seconds to Brisbane Jensen, but held on by six seconds to win a second gold medal here at these championships. She took a few seconds to recover, and then the trademark smile and celebration of MGA. And there's your podium there, and there's your champion. So that was the podium, and I did chat a little bit with uh, Kaylin after the race, and she said actually her classic race, she thought it was a little bit better, but she got fifth there. Today, her legs were, she feeling the classic race at the start, but she got some encouragement out on the course, some time splits, and she went on to an exciting bronze medal. Well, Steve, probably all these athletes are feeling it. You know, we're a couple days into this competition, this championships, you know, the fatigue is starting to set in from just day after day of racing and training, and so, yeah, she probably felt better physically in the classic race, but just showing her overall fitness that she was still able to get a bronze medal today. Yeah, and it was just so close. You know, the seconds really matter in a, in a race like this. And you don't really know all, at every point on the course. You just got to push the line when it's close. Yeah, and that's what we're going to see in the men's race here. We're going to have to see them fighting for it, pushing for every inch on the course. Yeah, when you think about it, just six seconds separating first and second in that race. And here we have the Hodler Trophy, the Mark Hodler Trophy for the best overall team in the Junior World yeah. Championships in across the, all the disciplines. Junior category, U23 races do not count towards that. Um, and so it's not just the individual medals on the line. There is a team nation. Um, so you know, points for that trophy. Yeah, and Norway is leading that, but Germany with some strong Nordic combined results yesterday, sitting in second, USA in third in that Mark Hodler trophy standings overall. So now let's take a look at the course, Tim. Two, two laps of a five kilometer course. Yeah, Steve, so we've seen a change in the course. It is not the same 5K course that we saw in the classic race. It is slightly different for this skate, this individual free. And so that first climb, when they come under the bridge and start climbing up, they've extended it. And so that climb is a little longer. It takes you actually to the highest point overall on the course uh, before they descend down, do some twists and turns, climb up the same second climb that we saw in the classic race, really important. Uh, piece of the puzzle because that's where they're going to be about you know 3k 2.8k is a time split 3k in kind of at the top of that climb before they descend all the way back down to the stadium we saw some times there athletes making up time on the descent athletes making up time on the climb and so every inch of that course is going to be crucial uh, for winning a medal today yes so Okay, so we're going to go down to Tom Steven, who's competed at the World Junior Championships and won a silver medal in the re relay a few years ago. So we're going to go down to Tom and get some insight. 
This morning we had the individual women and now we're going to the individual men. This is normally a race I would be competing in, but this year I won't be. In the race today is an individual format, so that means splits are super, super important. Everyone starts in 30 second intervals, so you won't know where you stack up against the leaders and where you are standing in the overall race. Coaches will give splits to tell you where you are. So they'll say like 10 seconds back on so-and-so, that gives you some perspective on where you're sitting. But often co coaches won't tell you anything because it's sometimes it can be bad news and they don't want to get you in your head and know that you're having a bad race. So some people, We'll ski the whole race without getting any splits. So we'll have to see what the coaches do out there. Yeah, and they're, they're great perspective from Tom about splits and how important the splits play here. You know, Tom, it's too bad he's not racing at these championships. He's coming off an injury. So we'll probably see him out next year competing at the U23 championships. Yeah, so great to get all that insight from Tom. So we're, we're gonna be back with start list for our junior men's race shortly. Coast Outdoors is Canada's premier cross-country ski store. We're proud sponsors of this year's World U23 Cross-Country Ski Championships at Whistler Olympic Park. We carry the best cross-country skis, boots, poles, clothing, and more. If you're serious about this sport, check out coastoutdoors.ca. What a beautiful day here. This is this afternoon here at Whistler Olympic Park. We had the junior women already do their individual start 10K race. Now the junior men's 10K individual start race is coming up and again we've talked about this in the broadcast about the equal distances between the two categories and here is our start list Chinese Taipei and Chile two teams in their first ever world junior championships are here some of the Americans Anders Wies from Aspen Colorado for the for the US then some of the Canadians so we got Garrett Seaver from Telemark uh, uh, Telmar Club in Kelowna not too far away Noah Weir Chaba, Chaba NWC from Edmonton, who is uh, now training in Canmore. He's number 110, so we're just going back there. Yeah, and Stephen, so those earlier starters, they are ranked lower on the fist ranking list. Um, so there is an advantage to be one of the later starters, because you will be getting splits off everyone in front of you, as Tom explained. And there we see 155, Jürgen Nordhagen, very interesting story, we'll talk about it. Definitely one of the favorites here. Then the Norwegian, Matthias Holback, 165, yeah. who won. Coming off that gold medal performance in the uh, classic race, you know, Xavier McKeever, such a smart racer. If he is in the mix after that first lap, watch out for him, because he paces so well. And then another favorite up there, Bib 174, Nico Antola. Yeah, gonna be interesting to see how this all shakes out. That, that 155, just to give you a little bit of insight, Jürgen Nordhagen, he, uh, he's a 17 year old, just 17 years of age, and he recently signed a pro cycling contract with Jumbo Visma, the top pro cycling team in the world. They won the Tour de France this last year, and he's a dual sport athlete, skiing and cycling. He was ninth at the World Junior Cycling Championships in the time trial, so interesting to see him. He, he, mainly participates or at least does well in the skate races and that's what this is today so definitely a skier to watch today yeah steve it's so great to see that you know even though he signed a contract with a cycling team that they're letting him race here today at these championships still letting him be involved in skiing which i think is going to just help his development later on in his career yeah they're they're just giving him that it's and it's very transparent and public you know we're not making him make a decision and he's going to uh He's going to, um, you know, do both sports, and he hasn't yet decided, his coach said. So that's really cool. So we're getting really close, folks, so stay with us. everybody to Whistler Olympic Park just two hours north of Vancouver 
A beautiful day here. The weather might be changing for tomorrow, but right now for the junior cross country men's individual 10 kilometer here at the FIS Nordic Junior and U23 World Ski Championships. It is a great day for ski racing. And Tim, really looking forward to this. We had excitement in the junior women's race and now the junior men's race coming up. Oh yes, Steve, you know, uh, you know, Mila skied so well. She was 12 seconds up, 7.8K into the race, and she lost six seconds coming down that hill. You know, it came to a really tight finish, but she still walked away with the gold medal. So there's, you gotta be fighting out there for every single inch on that course. You know, just because you're in the lead early on doesn't mean you're gonna be in the lead later on in the race. Yeah, and we saw that Lisa Erickson, she was leading on the first lap at the top of the course but on the descent she fell uh, fell back and uh was not a factor in the final standing so pacing is still important but you got to leave it all out there yeah she definitely went for it and you got to go for it in this race because if you don't go for it you you don't have a chance later on as well so as you can see there you know still beautiful stable conditions out here in whistler the sun is peeking out through the clouds you know we stepped outside for a moment i was blinded by that sunshine so we've had some fantastic weather here at these championships but that may change for tomorrow for the u23 race but uh, for today at least we've still got that very nice very stable just beautiful conditions we we're up at at whistler village yesterday just beautiful walking around outside just very nice temperatures just a wonderful spot to host a world junior and u23 nordic ski championships so we're getting pretty close we're just a few minutes away from starting our uh, 74 men and 27 nations getting underway here we've already had the sprint races to kick things off we had the mass start classic races a few days ago and now we have the individual start races and tim let's talk a little bit about the differences between a mass start and individual start yeah so in the mass start we saw you know a lot more athletes trying to hang on to each other skiing in groups having those groups to ski with to help push the pace find your rhythm whereas in this individual start it is every athlete racing against the clock and so we've said numerous times you know every second matters out there you got to be pushing hard you can't ease up any point you ease up someone else is jumping in there and taking those seconds away from you yeah, so there's our start list, and you can see Errol Rantula, a bronze medalist in the sprint. He's up there. Luke Allen trains in Thunder Bay. And yeah, with the National Dartmouth. Team Training Development Center, coached by Timo Perez. And there we've got 155. Jürgen Nordhagen, definitely a, a skier to watch. Another I was say Norwegian, a cyclist to watch. Yeah, another as well. Norwegian, but 167. Lars Hagen, look for him. He was really st strong at the trials races. Uh, Xavier McKeever, a Canadian, another one of our favorites out there. He's so smart out there racing, paces so well that if he's in the mix after five kilometers, yeah, watch out for him. And then one of our other favorites, Nico Antola. Bit 174. And here's the course, Steve. We got two times this 5K blue, slightly different than what we saw in the classic race. That climb, it's a little longer. You know, when they come under the bridge, they'll climb longer, a little higher up the course. It's going to take, take some of that energy, some of that um, power out of their legs early on uh, before they descend down and come up that second climb that we saw in the classic race. Yeah, two big climbs on this course in that first 2.8 to 3 kilometers and then a lot of descent. And that descent, even though we talk lots about the climbs, the descent has been important because we saw our champion in the women's race lose six seconds, half of her time gap in that final descent. Yeah, so and that descent, you know, I'm talking with Tom earlier, because again, he's raced at this level numerous times, is there are a few little flat sections in that descent. And it's really important that, you know, if there's a flat area, that athletes push hard, because a lot of time can be lost in some of those flats. Okay, getting close to the start in 74 starters, 27 nations. Yeah, so just to explain the start order, Tim, just to, just to go through for our audience that maybe doesn't realize how that start order is constructed. Yeah, so each of these athletes will have a fist point or fist ranking on the world and so these first starters are your lower ranked athletes um, again they they head out the advantage to starting later is that you have a time split off every single racer in front of you so you know where you are at that point in the race by your coaches who are yelling on the side of the track giving you splits 
Okay, we're about to get underway here with Joseph James Peng of Chinese Taipei. Chinese Taipei, first ever World Junior Ski Championships for Nordic for them. A young team. And it was inter interesting, Steve. They came early to Canmore, Alberta, to get some on snow skiing. You know, they don't do a lot of on snow skiing. Chinese Taipei, a lot of their skiing is roller skiing, which is the dry land training that you may see athletes uh, doing here at Whistler Olympic Park or other places across the country. And so, yeah, they were training in Canmore, Lake Louise area, leading up to these championships. So Peng is on course. He's a 15-year-old. This is Fan, 18-year-old, lives in Taipei City, and uh, competed at the Estonian Roller Ski World Cup uh, earlier this year, and also the Val de Fiemme Roller Ski World Cup. So a lot of roller skiing for these guys is they don't have a whole lot of snow in Taiwan and not a lot of cross-country skiing, as Tim mentioned. So they're mostly roller skiing, but they do have some great roller skiing, they say. Fantastic roller skiing in Taipei City. Yeah, I actually looked on their social media a couple of days ago and there was a post of, uh, you know, all the trees frosted up and, and they mentioned, you know, that we don't really get snow here. This is about as close as it gets is the frost uh, on the trees. So this is Lee. He is the one member that doesn't live in Taipei City. He lives in the mountains, mountainous area of Taiwan. He also competed in the Estonian World Cup. He's also into modern pentathlon. Here is Lou. So Lou is just 15 years of age. Again, a pretty young team for Chinese Taipei. He's also a cyclist. <laughs> so interesting, some of the athletes that compete in multiple sports. And a lot of roller skiing for these guys from Chinese Taipei and, and very young and again, team. Here's a good shot, Steve. You can see there's that 30 second interval, but you can see that competitor ahead of you. So you know if you're making time on them, trying to hunt them down, or if you're losing time to them. So this is Cristobal Rios. I got a chance to talk to the Chilean team and they are so happy to be here again. A, a very young team, first ever World Junior Nordic Championships. They train about 60 kilometers outside of Santiago, Santiago, Chile. And they're so excited. We saw uh, Sandoval from Chile start off the women. She just had this massive smile on her face. This is Tomas Diaz for Chile. Now on course. And this is two laps of 5K. Individual start, free technique. Pacing is gonna be so important in this race. You know, you gotta start out strong, position yourself and be able to maintain that pace throughout the full 10 kilometers. So that is Joseph James Peng, Chinese Taipei. Here is 107, Patricio Melanan of the Chilean team. As you were saying, they trained in Princeton, British Columbia for a month leading up to this to get some on snow uh, training before these World Junior Championships. And they're, uh, yeah, great start here for Melanan of Chile. Okay, here is Logan Dun Duncan. He's with the Huntley Club yeah, up in Scotland. And uh, his mom is named Lynn. So shout out to, uh, to Lynn, his mom. They work pretty hard at the Huntley Club. They actually just had their 30th anniversary, the Huntley Club. And uh, that club was started uh, by Roy Young, who's here helping the team. So Logan Duncan of uh, the Great Britain team now on course. Already we can see Bib 105 catching what Bib 104. So the 30 seconds has already been made up on the course. Here is Noah Bradford of Australia. He won the Australian Junior Championships in the skate technique back in September at Falls Creek up in the Australian Alps. So this is his technique. And there we see NWC, uh, Noah, what, uh, Noah's nickname, NWC from Edmonton, currently skiing with the Canmore team, based in Canmore, Alberta. His brother, also a skier, who does participates in biathlon. And this is his first start here at the World Junior Championships, I and believe. And he's, he's using that Chandra Crawford free, uh, free skate technique on that little downhill before the climb start. And here is Eski Ronau from Denmark. 
Now, this is an interesting story. He actually lives now in Aspen, Colorado, trains with the Aspen Valley Ski and Snowboard Club, but represents Denmark in national competitions. Uh, and he'll be going to Bates College next year. But he has Danish citizenship and competes for Denmark at these World Junior Nordic Championships. Here's the Lithuanian skier, Trechekov. And 10 kilometers, two times five kilometers, two big climbs to the top of the course at 2.8 kilometers. So in 74 starters, that was our 12th starter. As we see, Noah Bradford, he also competed at the World University Games. Here's another one of his teammates from Australia, John Mords. And talk a little bit about that start wand, Tim, just so people understand yeah, so how that works. Their time doesn't officially start until that wand is broken, you know? So we have a start list here. It's showing 30 seconds between starters, but there is a five second little leeway that if, you know, someone's a little anxious or holds back a little bit, their time doesn't officially start until that wand is broken. And there we see NWC Bib 110 climbing up the first hill of the course, the longest climb of the day. Here is Poland's Vesovic, 18 years of age. And lots of memories for Poland at these trails. Of course, the great Justyna Kowalczuk winning a gold medal amongst other medals, but a gold medal in the 30K Mass Star Classic, beating the great Merit Bjorgen in a crazy sprint. And here is Anders Wies. He is also with the Aspen Club, so two skiers from Aspen and uh, he's underway. He now skis for Montana State University. And here's a great little story about Anders. In grade eight, they have a ski race up Independence Pass, just outside of Aspen that crosses the Continental Divide. And it's snow covered in the winter, but they groom some trails and they ski up Independence Pass. And he won that race as a grade eight student. So you can see he likes to climb. And Independence Pass, very famous pass for the old Coors Classic cycling race. So that was Anders Wies. And here from Turkey, Abdullah Ilmaz, our only athlete from Turkey up in their higher altitudes. They do have some good cross-country skiing, and that is some good cross-country skiing yeah, right what there. what a great start. Looking super strong. Can he hold that strength throughout the 10 kilometers? Oh my goodness, that was a solid start. And here is our second Danish athlete, Magnus Tobiasen. He actually lives in Norway, but has dual citizenship. 18 years of age. Currently lives in Kongsberg, Norway. He's our 17th of 74 starters. And there is Vasevich of Poland. Again, great memories for the Polish team on these courses. 118. This is Stern of Slovenia. Of course, the senior World Nordic Championships in Planica a month from now. And then next year, Slovenia and Planica hold, uh, holding the Junior World Championships, Junior and U23 World Championships there next year in 2024. And here we can see a bunch of athletes out on course, climbing the hills. You know, we talk a lot about how hard they're pushing on the hills, but again, every section of that course matters. The descents, the flats, you gotta be pushing constantly. You know, we heard in the post-race interviews from our women's winners that it was a tough battle out there and they had to push the entire way around the course. So that is Yama of Estonia. Here, I believe this is our first Austrian athlete, Steiner. Christian Steiner. Austria, of course, winning a bronze yesterday in the Team Nordic Combined event. Starting gate now from the United States of America, Jack Tommy, number 121. That was a great battle we saw in the Team Nordic Combined event for the junior man. Came right down to the wire in the cross-country ski portion. 
And here's 121, Jack Condy of the United States, originally from Bend, Oregon, now with Montana State University. You know, to make this team, he had a crash at U.S. Nationals, but he had to fight back to get enough points to qualify for the Worlds after a crash. And he was actually the second best in the skate race at U.S. Nationals, so a strong skater from Montana State University and Bend, Oregon, Jack Condy. It's an interesting, you say he's from Bend there. They got they ski well into May, sometimes even June. So I know a lot of teams head over there May, June to start their ski season training on snow um, in Bend, Oregon. Yeah, you see that a lot with the US team where they'll have their May camp in Bend, Oregon just with the, the late snow. And here is Horniak of Slovakia, 122. Tobias Kempi of Finland, our first Finnish starter. From Kazakhstan, number 124, numero 24, Hamir So Kempi, he lives in Vukati, Finland. Quite a few of the members of the Finnish team live in Vukati. That's where they had the Junior World Championships two years ago, and they have that great ski tunnel there where you can train in the summer or in the, in the real cold weather. Yeah, of, exactly. Of, uh, I think they use it quite Finland. a bit when it's well below minus 30 degrees Celsius. Okay, Kazakhstan athlete, Murat Bikov. Oh, there. and here's a great shot of the racers on the climb. You know, they're approaching the... <laughs> yeah, so that's Logan Duncan for Great Britain. And then you can see behind, look at the move of NWC. The Canadian NWC looking great. That's the second, that's the, the second climb on this course. Two big climbs, and he looked effortless. So yeah, great he looked scheme. really strong in it. 2.8 kilometers. He is leading the race. You know, eight racers have been through there. So great to see him start it off really strong. Look at that. 30 seconds up on Noah Bradford. So Noah Weir Chaber. Chaba, our leader at 2.8 kilometers. Here's 126, Idukes of Latvia. We also had Carollo of Italy start. Okay, we're gonna have a Canadian coming up shortly. Number 127, Yeah, Tim. Garrett Siever from BC here. He skis for the Telemark Nordic team based out of Kelowna. Um, yeah, it's. I believe he's 18 years old. He's got a couple world juniors ahead of him. So he's looking for some good experience. Yeah, he's in uh, Kelowna, British Columbia. About, about a four or five hour drive from here. And it's always funny talking about, you know, how close e everything is in Canada. You know, it's a, a very different scale. You know, close is five or six hours away, whereas in Scandinavia, that's uh, Oslo to Sc Stockholm is about five hours. Okay, here's one of the French athletes, Essionier of France. So Essionier of France getting underway. First time at World Juniors. Competing in a lot of different sports, and he a uh, little more of a classic specialist. We'll see how he does here today in the skate race. Here's Tobias Ganna of Austria. And the Austria just going with a junior team here. And they had that great result yesterday in the Nordic Combined event. And this is Anders Wies. Sitting in that second spot behind Noah Weirchaber. The Aspen skier making this climb. And there you go, Steve, you can see at 2.8 kilometers, Noah still in the lead. So great start for Noah. We've had 15 athletes come through that checkpoint. It's important to you know establish your position early on the race and now can you maintain and keep pushing on all the way through the 10 kilometers. 
Yeah, so this, what you're seeing here, that is the second big climb on this course. Here's Charlie Dufik of the French team. Also first time at the World Juniors. Started skiing when he was eight years old. And he's now 18, so 10 years of skiing. And France, of course, just having those electric results at the World Cup. And then, nice then in the U23 men's race, Julien Arnaud in the 20K Classic getting that bronze. Talking to the French team, they are super pumped about French skiing right now. And that is motivating the whole team across the world. Another great shot here. You can see Bib 118 there skiing a slightly different technique, the one skate style versus the offset. Looks like slowly making ground on Bib 117. So even though they're starting 30 seconds apart, they can still use each other to gauge efforts and uh, try and reel another person in to make up time out on the course. Yeah, one thing that's always interesting is the different terminology for skate technique. So what this is offset in Canadian terminology what is it in American terminology oh you don't okay we've we finally stumped him he wasn't sure we know the v1 the v2 but I think it might be offset in American right, so terminology now, Bib, as well Bib, Bib 118's back to a one skate here in Canada which is the v2 in American uh, terminology yeah we got a great expert here Tim he's been giving us so much great insight we got lots of great comments from viewers so and this is Uber Hoffer from Italy now the Italian coach talking to him said Definitely, this is a guy to watch for. Maybe not for the win or for a medal, but maybe a top 10 result, very strong skater. David Oberhofer of Italy. And you can see here, again, just judging from that last time split, we saw two skiers come through. Bib 121, definitely making up time on Bib 120. So it looks like uh, that's Jack Honda, who is Bib 121, having yep. a great race. We'll see, oh, and he's approaching that. 2800 meter time check. We'll see where he stands. It looks like he's got a lead over Noah. Seven second lead. So Jack Condi moving into the lead at 2.8 kilometers. And just so you know, this is the first lap, but this is the top of the second biggest climb. They have a couple more hundred meters to the top. And then there's a long descent almost all the way to the stadium. Just a, a, one, one smaller climb just before the stadium. But this is the toughest part of this course, the longest climb. A lot of time can be made on this hill. A lot of time can be lost. And it's important, we saw in the women's race that they got to continually push into that descent, push the flats as they come back down to the stadium. So this is Stecker of Czechia. Also on course is 136 Jack Lang of Dartmouth. Grew up with the Ford Sayre Ski Club. He just started just before Stecker. That's Horniak of Bib, Slovakia. Bib 122, yeah, he's sitting in third place at the 2.8K mark. And this is Axel Artuzzi. Another coach's pick from the Italian team for the skate race. Again, okay, Bib 125 there, Steve. Uh, That's Corolla. Already, already past Bib 124. Great race for him. He's made up 30 seconds on him. He's current leader at 2.8K, almost 20 seconds ahead of the American. Yeah, he was second at the Italian Junior National Championships just a couple weeks ago in the 10K free. So again, 20 seconds, that's a good lead, but did he go out too start, or go out too hard off the start here? Again, coaches there on the side of the trail yelling to their athletes, giving them time splits, telling them where they are at in the race, uh, so those athletes have a good idea. So coming up next, Aero Rantala. Bronze medal in the sprint. Fell back in the classic race, although the classic race, he led that charge to bring back that group of three together, and we thought he might do it at the end. Yeah, we th I, I thought he might come back for a bronze medal in that mass start race. Uh, again, fastest qualifier from the sprint race. Uh, and a bronze medalist from that sprint. So he could have a good one today.
So here's Idukes of Latvia. Moves into second place. Again, we're still pretty early in this race. There's a lot of racers to come. Um, and we'll start to see if these early starters have gone out too hard, how they're pacing for this 10 kilometer individual skate technique. So we've had 40 starters, 34 more to go. That is Jack Condi. Matt, Montana State University athlete. Noe Neff of Switzerland. So Switzerland with the bronze in the women's race. Marina Kalin, you know, I thought I was saying on screen that I thought that was maybe her best race ever. And she said, you know, she thought the classic race was her best race ever, and she felt tired at the start of this race. Then she started getting splits, and that motivated her to fight for a bronze, but very happy with her championships here. Definitely peaking physically and mentally at the right time, the Swiss skier, Marina Kalin. And her sister will be racing, Nadja Kalin, will be racing in the U23 race tomorrow. And here is Jaretski of Poland. He's our 43rd starter. This is Mateusz Pavic of the Czech, Czechia. Couple of interesting starters coming up, 147, 148, 149. Those will be some interesting starters to talk about when they come up, 147 to 149. But that is Pavic of Czechia. Here's Dufik. See how he comes into this 2800 meter timing point. So again, if you're just joining us, this is the junior men's 10K individual start free technique race. And Dufik moves into second place there, Steve. 9.2 seconds behind. So that's at 2.8 kilometers. And again, that, that time check is uh, sort of in the middle of this climb. So they pass that. So there, there's a, they come around the corner and there's that long, slow, steep, uh, not so steep, gradual ascent that they got to really push over. And we've seen a lot of different time differences, how they push over the top of the climb. And here's Gerzurek of Poland, sitting third right now at 2.8 kilometers. So Carollo still holding on to a very good lead, the silver medalist at the Italian Junior Championships just a couple weeks ago in the skate race at this distance. And here we've got, Tim, 147. Mateus Bauer from Czechia, his dad at the 2010 Vancouver Olympics, and I bet his dad is watching right now, took a bronze medal in the individual start skate race. And uh, Mateus Bauer has had some strong races here, looking to get some inspiration from his dad, dad's results 13 years ago on these trails. Yeah. Can he be on the podium just like his father was 13 years ago? Now, Lukasz Bauer is actually coach with the, uh, with the Polish team, the head coach with the Polish team now. Now, here's Adrik Krafsen. He is American, Stillwater High School, same high school as Jesse Diggins, the gold medalist in the 2018 games, medalist at the Beijing games. Now skis. He's in Michigan. One twenty-eight. Essionnier Luke of France, and here is Luke Allen. One of the Hot Street boys. In summer, he lives in Thunder Bay, trains with the National Team Development Center from Nakertuk, the Ottawa area originally, and, and currently skiing with uh, Dartmouth University. Yeah, there's a great group of athletes at uh, at Hot Street and Thunder Bay that train together, live together, and he's one of them, and he's made some great improvements over the last couple years. And I read an interview and he said, you know what, he really focused on a couple aspects of technique, and it's really come together. And here is the Finnish skier, Nilo Makinen. We know the Makinen family is watching the Finnish live stream of this event. Talk to one of their friends, and they are very much enjoying the coverage. 
of these World Junior Nordic Championships here in Whistler Olympic Park. There is Stecker of Czechia. And then Artuzzi for Italy. Definitely has made up time there on Stecker. Yeah, Look so how strong his one skate looks there, Steve. He is pushing, he's gritting his teeth already. Is it a little too early in this race for him to be gritting his teeth? But it is at the top, near the top of the long climb. Look how long he's one skating. And now he finally switches to the offset technique, which is the climbing technique. But he's really gritting his teeth there. He was third at the National Italian Junior Championships in the 10K skate, and then got one of the Canadians yeah, just coming towards Bib the screen. 110 NWC there, he's approaching the 7.8 kilometer mark of the race. And he's your current leader of the race so far. This is Takazawa, 153. From Japan. So we can see some, some athletes, Tim, are on their second lap. Some are just starting. And this is where you can get, you know, maybe you can catch a ride. Yeah, you can some, pace off and someone. It's just, it's just kind of fluke there of when you lap through, who is starting? Because definitely we see as these, you know, bib numbers are going out, break the wand, start off. There's adrenaline going. They start off really fast. And if you can catch in, jump in behind them and get pulled around the course on your second lap, there is some benefit to that. So here is Anton Gron, 154, the gold medalist, the big man from Sweden, gold medalist from the sprint on the first day of these junior world ski championships for Nordic. Struggled in the classic race, but a strong start here. And now we've got one of our favorites today, Jürgen Norhagen from Norway, ninth at the World Junior Championships in cycling. He signed already a pro cycling contract, but it is very clear he's got room to develop, room to choose still what sport he puts more of his effort in. But he loves, we talked to his coach, Tim, he loves both cycling and skiing. Very talented athlete. Yeah, he's definitely, you know, an earlier starter compared to some of those other favorites. So look for him setting that pace, setting the time, and will the others be able to, you know, hunt him down? Yeah, so he's not gonna get the splits that the others will get. So it'll be interesting to see, and it's a very different pacing than a cycling time trial beat with the big climbs here. Here is Yuri Tuz, 14th in the classic race earlier this week. Definitely a strong skier. A little more, I think, in the classic technique, but we'll see today here in free technique. Then we've got Simon Nielsen, second at the Swedish trials in the skate technique race. So probably one of Sweden's strongest skaters in this race. So Nielsen now on course, and look at that. He can maybe catch a ride, or at least give a ride to that other athlete. I believe that's Bib 137 out there he's just passing. So here is Pierre Cacce, bronze at the Swiss National Championships in skate. Again, Switzerland having that bronze medal in the junior women's race with Marina Kalen. A lot of inspiration there, but she seems so composed at the finish. Steve, I'm just gonna jump in here. You know, we went 2.8K. It's Artuzzi who's in the lead so far with 43 skiers skiing by 2.8K. Um, and Artuzzi is the skier, the Italian skier that we saw one skating so strong up that climb. Hey, okay, here's Molestad, his first World Junior Championships and his first race of these World Junior Championships. He was third in one of the skate trials races in Norway for the Junior World Championship. Here's Kyoke of Japan, our 60th starter out of 74. So we're getting to our highest ranked athletes. So 
Tim, it looks like Axel Artuzzi from Italy still holding the best time at 2.8 kilometers. Yeah, that is definitely the time to beat. 6.45 for 2.8K. Again, 2.8K, you got most of the climbing over with at that point. Um, so some very fast times for a lot of climbing. Davide Gio of Italy, fifth in the classic mass start race. The national Italian junior champion from just two and a half weeks ago in 10K skate. Yeah, I know. Talking with the Italian coaches, they said watch for him. Definitely could be up there in the top five. Could even challenge for a podium spot, Steve. Next up from Germany, Robin Fischer, 11th in the classic mass start race. A little stronger in classic, but... You know, the Germans, they are in a battle with Norway for the Mark Hodler Trophy for the overall top nation at the Junior World Championships across all disciplines. So, Steve, just I'm looking at the splits here. Some interesting little things here. Artuzzi, who is leading at 2.8K, coming in. You know, mostly it's descending. Coming in the lap, he's actually... I believe behind, sitting in second place at the... Halfway mark. And there we see bib 149, Luke Allen from Canada. Moves into third place, Luke Allen. And here's Luca Petzold. Luca Petzold of Germany. And here's Eric Bergström of Sweden. He won the Swedish Junior World Trials in the skate race. So this should be the strongest skate skier for Sweden in this race. Yeah, so still at 2.8 kilometers, it's Axel Artuzzi. And here coming to the top of the course, Luke Allen, the Dartmouth skier from Trains in Thunder Bay, originally from Ottawa. Here is Matthias Holbach, our 20K Classic Mass Start champion. Yeah, so he's definitely one to watch for. You know, he has that confidence from the win earlier this week. Uh, just goes to show you the shape he's in. So he knows he's ready to bring another podium result today. Yeah, and Luke has some solid times at 20, 2.8 kilometers. He is sitting 11 seconds down on Artuzzi. Niklas Steiger, 12th in the classic mass start race for Switzerland. Switzerland definitely showing they've got the skis today, the right wax, the right, for the right conditions. So Switzerland, Niklas Steiger on course. Keeping an eye on that 2.8 kilometer checkpoint. And here is Lars Hagen. He was 10th in the classic race, but he was looking pretty good for most of it. Yeah, he's a strong distance skier. He is definitely one of my favorites today. Look for him out there. He's hungry for a medal. He's 17 years of age. He was sitting in that third place spot for most of the classic distance race and then just got caught in the last couple kilometers falling back to 10th this is his kind of race individual start here we've got Wagner you know Wagner came third at the Ju German national champs in the skate it was a 15k mass start but again that was in the open category so he's another one one of those athletes I have starred look for Tom Wagner out there here is Nordhagen 155, he's got 0.9 of a second ahead of Artuzzi. He's one of our favorites. You can see the Norwegian coach there with his phone, probably yelling him, yelling to him exactly that. You got 0.9 of a second up on second place. You got to pick up the pace. Elias Danielson of Sweden starting 169. He took a bra he took a silver in the sprint on the first day of competition, 16th in the classic mass start race. Elias Danielson, but as Tim was noting, Nordhagen is in the lead by one second at 2.8 kilometers. Steve, it's this, oh, that last camera shot we just had, a gradual climb, that's where a lot of time can be made up. You know, you gotta keep pushing up over the hill, um, and the, 
faster you go over the top, the more speed you carry into the descent. And I saw that the other day, the coaches were, show, were working on it with the athletes that you've got to push right over that climb before you start tucking because you can maybe pick up a half second or a second. And there's Xavier McKeever. Yeah, I have starred him as well. Definitely one of my favorites today. You know, talking to him yesterday, he looks so relaxed. I think some of the pressure's off. And uh, if he's in the mix after the first lap, watch out for him because he is such a smart skier, paces things so well. Yeah, we've seen that. You know, his, his uncle, Brian McKeever, the 16-time Paralympic gold medalist, so great pacing in races over the years. Often you see him like 20th spot, 10th spot, 5th spot, and then 1st spot at the end of the race. So this is Pierre Cotier of Switzerland, just a few seconds down on Nordhagen. Yeah, Pierre Cotier moves into 3rd place. El Elias Keck of Germany, 4th in the classic mass start, just missing a medal. I believe, Steve, he was 3 seconds off a medal. So he's going to be hungry as well. Molestad now moving into the lead at 2.8 kilometers, just two, two seconds, almost three seconds ahead of Nordhagen. And this is the second big climb on the course. And Albacini of Switzerland, seventh in the classic mass start, second at the Swiss Nationals Championships in skate. Could this be his day as it was for Marina Kalen in the women's race for Switzerland? That is Molstad, Molstad going up over the top. And again, it's 2.8K into a 10K race. It's still early. On the next lap, we'll start to see which athletes have gone out too hard, cannot maintain the pace, and which athletes are pacing that this race and quite well. And here is Nico Antola, silver medal in the classic mass start race. You know, and Nico was pushing that pace the whole time on that 20K mass start. He knows how to push. Um, he wasn't catching a ride from the other skiers in that classic race, so look to him to push the pace in this 10K. Definitely podium potential today for him. So all of our starters now on course. We've had a few athletes already finish. Corolo is in the hot seat at and there, the finish. There's Jack Lang, 136, coming through your screen. He's our current leader, 7.8 kilometers into the race. Yeah, he is ahead of Martino Corolo, who is our fastest, fastest finisher so far. So you're going to see some athletes that are on their second lap, some athletes are on their first lap. On this first lap is 162, Robin Fischer of Germany. So just to put into perspective, Steve, you know, Jack Lang was behind some of those skiers who are in second and third right now, and so he's pacing it really well, moving up, gaining time on them to put them into first place so far. So that's the Japanese skier, Kiyoki. You are still in the top five with 55 through five Oh my goodness, you can hear. <laughs> yeah. that, that is exactly what the coaches are yelling to those athletes telling them exactly where they are placed, telling them time gaps to the next athlete. That was a good pickup by the camera crew. Yeah, that was Jack Lang that just skied through there, getting some, some instructions and some splits from the American coaches. And that's uh, Bib 164 there, Bjorkstrom, who won the Swedish trials on the 10K free. We're gonna get a time split on him here. And this is Holback. Hold back, coming up to the time check at 2.8 kilometers. Yeah. Our winner in the East Bergstrom is start. sitting in seventh place at the time check. I definitely think hold back. It's going to be tight here. Hold back. And he's by 0.1 of a second, Steve. This is this is going to be an interesting race for sure. So three Who Norwegians. Who can maintain that pace? Three Norwegians in the top ten. Well, the Norwegians are one, two, and three right now at yeah. 2.8 K in. It's like the Norwegians, they got shot of the medals, the junior men on the first day, fourth, fifth, and sixth, and they are determined to not let that happen again. They had great results in the, uh, in the mass start, 20 K for the junior men. Sitting top three here at 2.8 kilometers. And we just also see Steiger from Switzerland. He came through 166. He is up there. Lars Hagen, one of my favorites for today. His time's looking good. Is he going to move into the lead? Where is he? 
so tight for the top three. Coming up to the timing spot. Lars Hagen, your new leader, 2.8 kilometers. Missed the medals in the classic mass start. Just fell off the pace in the final kilometer. Almost four seconds up. Wow. Ahead of Molstad. So he's got 7.2 kilometers to go. This is just the first of two laps. So it's still early and we saw with Lisa Erickson going out hot and not able to hold the pace and falling back. So still lots of racing so to go. 30 now at the finish line. Jakob Postleitner from Austria. So that's Postleitner of Austria Postleitner coming in, 128. Essionier of France. But Hagen, leader at 2.8 kilometers at the top of the second big climb. Then they have about a, a kilometer and a half of descending. So you can get a rest, but still lots more racing to go here in this 10 kilometer race. Bib 132 coming, coming around the stadium, gonna head to the finish. There's one of our Chinese Taipei athletes, fan, and first world juniors for Chinese Taipei. Oberhofer from Italy, finishing up his 10K. So one skier we're really watching for, a couple skiers, McKeever of Canada and Nico Antola. They'll be coming to that 2.8 kilometer checkpoint shortly. Here though is the finish, Oberhofer Gonna finish behind his teammate Carollo at the finish. Carollo still sitting in the hot seat as your leader. Uberhofer sitting in fourth now. Total of 32 athletes have finished so far. 33 athletes, I mean. So Jack Lang, the Dartmouth skier from Fort Sayre Ski Club. Trying to get into that top spot. He can go into the hot seat, Jack Lang. Great race by Jack Lang there. First so far out of 34 skiers. We got a new leader. A new leader indeed. The American. Started out with the Fort Sayre skier and he gives a nice little celebration. For Sarah Ski Club, I'm sure, watching up there in Northeast U.S. But how long will he sit there? Axel Artuzzi, who was just ahead of him at 7.8 kilometers coming into the finish. We're waiting for a few more skiers to go through that 2.8 kilometer checkpoint, but this is Artuzzi trying to move ahead of the American Jack Lang. Oh, I don't know this if is he gonna can be do tight. it. It doesn't look like he's gonna get it. Jack Lang still in the hot seat. Nice finish by Jack Lang. He had to, he had to move up several seconds on that descent, and there he goes. The Ford Sayre skier with a smile on his face. Gonna be in the hot seat here, but here comes Nico Antola to And he moves into first place. Five seconds up, again, 2.8 kilometers into a 10K race. Has he gone out too hard? Is he pacing it just right? So Nico Antola, silver medal in the 20K mass start. He tried to drop everyone. He couldn't drop Holback, and Holback overtook him to take the win. But now he doesn't have to worry about that in this race. But you can see that top six that was on the screen, only a handful of seconds separating the top six at 2.8 kilometers. Still early in this race, still a lot of a lot of climbing on that second lap. Yeah, Stephen, if we jump to the, the halfway point, 5,000 meters, 5K as they lap through the stadium. Molstad's in the lead. There's still a bunch of skiers, some of those top skiers to come through here. Here we got Nicholas Steiger coming through the lap lane. Let's see where he ends up. But you know, it's still so close on that top point climb. Two of a second behind Molstad. This is this is where the racing really starts to take off, is who is saving it for the second lap or who yeah. can really suffer on the second lap and push through the pain. Here is Hagen. He was sitting second at the top of the course at 2.8 meters, coming through. And he is 3.6 seconds ahead of his teammate, Molstad. 
but so close. And Tim, there's really about, in these next three kilometers, about two kilometers of climbing. So this is such a crit critical part yeah, of this race. For sure, and so there's there's not only climbing, but there's some flat sections too in between those climbs that breaks things up. And so these athletes not only have to push hard on the climbs, but push hard on the flats as well, because a lot of time can be made up on those flats. And there's Luke Allen. Dartmouth College. Coming in at 7.8, just past the 7.8 kilometer mark, sitting in 11th place. Again, push, got to push up over this climb. He's in the one skate here. He's going to get up over the top and then start descending down towards the final climb near the, above the stadium. Wagner, he's lapping through, four, uh, 19th in the classic race, and now another finisher. This is Noe Neff from Switzerland and Kodokaru of Romania. And this is Duretsky of Poland finishing up. So we're getting into the second half of the field on their last lap. And here is Nordhagen pushing the pace here. Jump skating up this climb. He knows this is critical. If he wants a medal, Tim, he's got to go hard. He's kind of push. Devley, from the cycling background, he's a strong climber. He's got to make up his time on the climbs. You can see at 7.8K of all the athletes that have come through so far, he is our leader. 25 seconds up on Artuzzi. But again, there's a lot of skiers, a lot of big names coming behind him. And they'll all be getting splits off of that time, Steve. And it's interesting. He was just almost equal with Artuzzi, and now he's way ahead of Artuzzi at this checkpoint. So as Nordhagen pacing himself just right, we're going to start to see that story emerge over the next 10 minutes. There is comes Xavier McKeever, Bib 171. We'll see. I believe he was about 18th, 20th at the 2.8K mark. We'll see where he is at the halfway mark. Just lapping through. So he's sitting 19th. But again, he really paces himself well. And you can see 36 seconds, first to 20th. I don't want to call it, Tim. This is so close. And we saw how Nord Nordhagen made up a lot of time over some of the other competitors that he was, was with. So this could change quite dramatically here. But you can see, Steve, there, Elias Keck started right, 30 seconds behind him, has already caught him. Elias Keck is sitting in fourth place at the halfway mark. And here comes Antela already into the stadium. Let's see if he can challenge some of these Norwegians for the top spot halfway through. So at five kilometers, Antola, the silver medalist, from a few days ago, has moved into the lead. Antola in the lead ahead of Hagen. Five seconds ahead. Just to put it into perspective, he, he had a, roughly five seconds at 2.8K. So they're moving at similar speeds, him and Hagen. He, this guy never shows any emotion. Warming up, doing intervals, skiing hard, racing. No emotion on this guy's face. He is all business when it comes to racing third at the National Senior Championships in Finland. This it just goes to show you the focus that he has. I know yesterday skiing on course, we saw him ski by, same expression on his face in training as he is racing. So here's Molested, definitely someone that could take a medal here. He was leading at 7.8 kilometers, you see it there. Here's Davide Gio of Italy. Molested leading at 7.8. Nordhagen second, Gio trying to hold on to third spot right now, 61st starter, 13 more skiers after him to come on this final lap. Gio sitting third. And Steve, we saw in the women's race, you know, when uh, MGA came through at 7.8K, she was 12 seconds up, but when she crossed the finish line, she lost six seconds. And here comes Luke Allen. Skis for Nakertuk Nordic out of the Ottawa area. 
currently studying at Dartmouth University. One of the hot street boys. Great race for him. Great race indeed, no question. And you can just tell the effort that those athletes put out there. They cross the line and collapse. They give it everything out there on the course. Here's 162, Robin Fisher, the German. There we've got Nico Antola, 174, our leader out on the course. Silver medal three days ago. Could it be gold today? But two big climbs that he has to ascend. And this is where the pain really comes on. Yeah, Steve. And you know, it's not only just the fitness of these athletes, it's the pain threshold, especially in an individual race. Some of these athletes are cramping up. Is it possible for them to just push through that pain and keep going? Um, we'll determine who our winner may be. So that was Jack Lang. You're getting some time in the hot seat there for the American. I don't think he wants to get too comfortable there, but right now the Dartmouth College athlete from Hanover, New Hampshire and the Ford Sayre Ski Club is sitting in it. And here is Nordhagen, the Norwegian 17-year-old signed a pro cycling contract with Jumba Visa Visma, the top cycling team in the pro peloton. But look at this, he's got to push hard to overcome Jack Lang. Nordhagen, is this a medal performance? 14 seconds up on Jack Lang. The 17 year old skier still trying to decide between top level skiing and top level cycling. Is the new leader. Here comes Steiger. And Steiger moves into second place, Steve. Nine seconds back of Molstad. He's battling it out for a medal out there. Switzerland could walk away with another medal. Uh, in this men's race, they won a medal, bronze medal in the women's race earlier today. And here's Hagen. Hagen has fallen off the pace of Molestad. Hagen is three seconds down. That has pushed Steiger to third and Nordhagen to 12 seconds back at, in fourth place at 7.8 kilometers. So look at Hagen. Look at Hagen take this climb. He's going to attack. He's going to fight for every second out there. Two seconds. It's still, he's still able to make up that time, but he's got to keep pushing, push through that pain. A 17 year old in high school missed out on a medal in the mass start. Oh, you can hear the breathing. This, that is Steiger. Steiger's battling it out for a medal. You know, the only person that I see in the splits that can overtake them is Nico Antola, who is sitting in first place at 5K. And here's Molestad coming into the finish. On your right, 159 of Norway. He was one of the top skiers at 7.8 kilometers. Is this a medal performance for Molestad of Norway? He is our new leader now. Look at that effort he just put in. That He should be walking away with the podium today. Oh my goodness. That could be a medal performance, but it's oh so close. But Molestad picking it up on the final lap. He left something for the final lap. Elias Danielson. Silver medalist from the sprints, 169, catching Wagner. Okay, so let's look at, so Molestad was leading at 7.8 kilometers, but Nico Antola has not hit that point, so that's gonna be an interesting point. And, and remember, Lars Hagen was only two seconds off that pace. He could still challenge for that top position and come out ahead of Molestad. Yeah, Hagen and Antola certainly are threatening, but also Steiger. And here's David Giel from the Italian team coming through, coming into the finish. He's got a great race here. It looks like maybe he can get into that second spot at the finish right now. Still 13 more finishers to come in. Is he going to do it? Very close here. And it looks like he's going to be... Oh, oh, the lunge was not quite enough. He's in, sitting in third place, so... He's keeping his fingers crossed for some crashes out there. Davida Gio finishing third spot for the finishers, 13 more to come. Just at the halfway point, it was Antolo, 
And Tola. And here Hagen comes Hagen, Steve. Here he comes. So Hagen, who was sitting second at five kilometers, was sitting second at 7.8 kilometers without Antola coming through there yet. Can Hagen hold on? This is 162. This looks like Robin Fischer of Germany coming in. Robin Fischer coming in, looking for a top 10 here. 12 more finishers to come in. And here is Antola, Tim. Here is Antola coming in. And you know what? He still is in first place. He just came through the time check at 7.8 kilometers, nine seconds up on Molstad. What a race for Antola. 12 seconds up on Hagen. The, the downhill is important here. We have seen some skiers lose time. Andreasen lost six seconds on the downhill. There you can the also Kiever. see yeah, Bib 171 and Zafim Kiever skiing with Antola. And there is Molestad sitting in the hot seat, but here comes, this is 165. I believe that's Holbach. Now Holbach. You can tell already by his time, he won't take over that hot seat from Molstad. Molstad will stay pretty comfortable by that fireplace. Charging here. Hoback, you won the gold in the 20K mass start here just a few days ago. I don't think it's going to be enough to get a podium here today. More finishers. This is Steiger coming in. Steiger, he was in the running. He was sitting 18 seconds behind. Moves into second place, four seconds back. He has a chance of, of a podium. But here comes Hagen. Hagen trying to get the This is going to be position. close, Steve. It's this, oh, this is going to be so close. Does he have enough to take over the lead position? It's going to go right to the line, the lunge. And he has moved ahead of Molestad. What? What a finish, what a push. Wow, Steve, he was he was two seconds back of Molstad at the top of the course. He must have been pushing on the descents, pushing on the flats to come away just one second up here. So right now at the finish, Hagen in first, Molestad in second, Steiger in third, Nordhagen in fourth. And I believe the only athlete still out there that can bump these guys down is Antola. Nico Antola, our last starter of the day, I think he's the only one who can bump Hagen out of that first place position. So we just saw Elias Kleck. He was Keck, he was sitting in sixth place, 17 seconds down on Hagen at the top of the course. That is Hagen, Lars Hagen, 17 years old, was sitting in that third place spot so, for so long in the classic mass start race, but got swallowed up by the pack with a kilometer to go. But he's sitting in a really good spot here. We've got the Swede coming in. Elias Danielson. And here we've got a couple more skiers coming in. This is interesting. We see McKeever and we see Albacini. I remember McKeever was skiing with Antola at the top of the course. And I didn't see Antola in that, in that image. Here we go. This is Danielson. And silver in the sprint. His brother, Emil, won a bronze in the sprint in U23. See, Wagner just behind Wagner, a strong classic skier. Danielson, 10th right now. But a few skiers to come. There is Antola. 174. He was your leader at 7.8 kilometers. There's Hagen sitting in the hot seat. Look at that, look at that view. Got the, the fur on the chair, fireplace in front of you. It looks pretty comfortable. Now here is Keck. Keck, I don't think he's gonna get in those top two spots. He's got quite a ways to go. He's got this big 180 degree turn. And then about 100 meters into the finish, This is Keck. He was fourth in the classic mass start. It's looking like he's going to slot into fourth position right now. 
Steve, it's looking like when those athletes hit those whiskers, it's about 13, 14 seconds until they cross the line. So that's kind of a gauge. Here we go, Antola. Will he take over first place here? Nico Antola. He took a silver in the 20K mass start. He couldn't drop, pull back. But here, he skied on his own. I think he's gonna meters. get it. It's about 13 seconds from when he started skiing by the whiskers. So try to overtake Hagen. Could it be Antola for gold? And he's gonna celebrate. Antola, junior world champion here in Whistler Olympic Park for the Finnish skier. This is Albacini and McKeever coming into the finish. And Antola's got to be happy with that. A silver medal from the Master Classic and now junior world champion. The machine, Nico Antola. Doing his job, all business, get her done. He's going to go over and congratulate the silver medalist, Lars Hagen, the 17-year-old. Now, Antola, third at the National Finnish Championships. And I was reading that the team said if he does well here, he's going to go to the Senior World Championships for Team Finland. And there he gets to sit in the hot seat for a moment. Antola. Awesome Antola. Awesome here. Antola. And that expression on his face is still stone cold. Stone cold Nico Antola. Gold medal to add to a silver medal from three days ago. Lars Hagen of Norway, 17 years of age. Did he push it on the last two kilometers of that course? You know, he was sitting behind Molstad, really pushed it on the descent, pushed it on the flats to end up second place today, walking away with a silver medal from the Junior World Championships. Yeah, I think Hagen showed that on the downhills he could make up some time. Silver medal after the Disappointment in the classic mass start. I mean, he left it all out there. It looked like maybe he could get a bronze, but that chasing pack swallowed him up. But this, this time, and this is the idea of the individual start. It's a pure endurance effort. And we talked to, to John Allberg, and he said, I want to make the hardest course for the individual start. It's a pure endurance effort. And then third, Molestad. Molestad taking third for the Norwegians. Yeah, we saw that little bit of back and forth. That's that's individual start racing. But again, going back with John Ulbrich said, making the hard course, that's why they've changed that climb, that first climb, made it tougher to really see who's the true endurance athlete out there. And that person today in the junior men category is Nico Antola. Yeah, celebrate the moment. You know, a lot of projections of where this guy might end up three or four years from now, but celebrate the moment. A silver medal and a gold medal. Top seal. And there's one of the Norwegian fans. They got to be happy with the results today. Yeah. One, two in the women's race earlier today, and now second and third place in the men's. And that's Steve, that's a lot of medals, a lot of podiums, all going towards that Mark Hodler trophy. So Norway's got to be moving up the ranks. They were the leader starting off today. Um, and they definitely got to start breaking away and getting further ahead. And also, just a little more on Lars Hagen. His sister, Anna Hagen, has won medals for Norway in the Youth Olympic Games and the Junior World. So all of these interesting family relationships, you know, now he can come home with a medal to, uh, to match what his sister, Anna Hagen, did. Molestad. He comes from the very far south in Norway, so less snow, uh, better roller skiing conditions, but uh, delivered today with a bronze medal, and it was close. Steiger from Switzerland in fourth. 
But, but again, Steve, you know how we imagine he, got, he does come from the far south, but it's not that far probably of a drive for him to get, go a little further north and find some snow. You know, we were talking about these BC athletes competing here. You know, they're in the same province where these championships are yet. It's like a six, seven hour drive yet within this province. So any surprises here, Tim? Looks like, uh, I would say maybe Norhagen, he was he was fifth, tied for, let's see here, he was uh, sixth place. I think a solid race, I mean, he's 17 years old, first world, champ, world championships for skiing. Yeah, definitely my two favorites going in today are first and second, Antola and Hagen, but I was definitely thinking that Nordhagen was gonna be challenging those two men out there today. And early on he did, but it was Antola, the machine. Stone Cold Nico Antola taking the gold, 17-year-old Lars Hagen taking the silver and Molestad taking the bronze here. Individual 10K junior men at Whistler Olympic Park. A beautiful day, Tim. The sun, sun is, is out. Yeah, sun is still shining. Cannot ask for better weather at this championships. You know, last nationals last march we were here for the nationals event it was raining and cloudy never got sight of sight of the mountains but this is beautiful weather out there but tomorrow might be a storm moving in for the u23 man and how is that going to affect the waxing and setting up for that oh, race? for sure i'm i heard anywhere from 15 to 20 centimeters could come down tomorrow and again another 15 to 20 centimeters for saturday so that's going to definitely affect the course out there going to make it a lot harder on those climbs it's going to feel like skiing and mashed potatoes going up some of those climbs which just sucks the energy out of the legs and makes it that much harder so you better be a good cook if you want to handle the mashed potatoes well tomorrow. But today, for the junior man, Nico Antola on top. Lars Hagen with the silver. Molestad third. Steiger pushing hard at the finish in fourth. Keck of Germany in fifth. Norhagen of Norway in sixth. Davida Gio in seventh. USA Jack Lang, he was what in the hot seat yeah, for a he, while. He was there for a long time. Great race by Jack Lang. Americans should be super pumped about that result. Yeah, I'm sure the folks at the Fort Sayer uh, Cross Country Ski Club in Northeast uh, United States were cheering them on there. And then the Canadians, we saw Luke Allen and Xavier McKeever up there. Yeah, so probably, maybe not the result Zab was hoping for, but uh, you know, every day you gotta go out there fighting and that's what they did today. Anders Wies of Aspen, Colorado, sitting 33rd. Mateus Bauer of Czechia. Some of the Spaniards, Celis Gash and Borel. NWC, Noah Weirchaba, he's very strong start. Looked really good out there, Garrett Seaver of Kelowna, British Columbia. Again, with Garrett, he's got a couple more World Junior Championships ahead of him, so great that he's gaining this experience, setting himself up for future championships. And there's the Chilean teams and Chinese Taipei in their first ever World Junior Championships. So a beautiful day today. Some great racing, some comebacks, some athletes falling off the pace. The individual start races, a pure endurance effort. It was junior men and junior women today. Tomorrow, the U23 men and women yeah. could be very interesting. And we'll, we'll see what Mother Nature throws at us tomorrow and see how that mix, mixes things up. Yeah, Whistler Olympic Park, 2010 Vancouver Olympics, and now the biggest event since those Olympics, the FIS Nordic World Junior and U23 Ski Championships. A lot of tremendous racing, and I, I bet you we're gonna have some interesting situations tomorrow. So we're just gonna wind down. Have a great day, folks. So this is the highlights of today. There was one of the Canadians early on. Garrett Seaver out there on course. There is Nico Antola. What Stone a pace cold. he set. He just went out and he skied every stride identical, knocking away seconds from his competitors. And it was Stone Cold, Nico Antola on top of the world in Whistler.